And that is how I'm going to introduce my next speaker, um, Isel Kokchu, who is the co-founder of Story, which is an app that allows any organization with a story, such as museums, art galleries, or zoos, to tell easily and directly to the public. So Story has over 250 clients, both here and overseas. And Azelle has always had dreams of entrepreneurship. She's helped to launch two successful restaurants before taking off to Turkey, that's her get on a plane thing, to teach English for three months. Um, all of this she did, by the way, by the age of 19. So when she came back to New Zealand, Azelle became involved in um, startup doing social and digital marketing, and she sort of right there realized that this was her big passion. And so she had this passion for creating and developing business ideas. And shortly after that, she met her business partner, Chris, and story became a reality. So it's really, really difficult to ask somebody who is so young what they would ask their younger self. But I did, and Azelle's answer is that her, she would be fearless. And although a customer may say no for now, it shouldn't discourage you to go and see them again in the future and land that deal. And I hope she's going to mention the world of wearable arts in her story, but if not, I'll mention it later. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Azelle Kochu. Thank you so much for that amazing introduction and I'm so excited to be here today to share the story of Story and where we've come in the last two years. So the story happened in Wellington 2012, uh, June 2012, when my co-founder Chris Smith and I were at Wellington Zoo. We were looking at a pelican and had all of these questions in our mind. How does the pelican fly? Where does it originate from? All of these questions. Um, and when we went to look for information, we had this plaque in front of us that said very minimal, uh, this, is a uh, this is a pelican, it does this. And we wanted to know more. We wanted to see photos and videos, uh, and we knew that information existed somewhere. We looked on Google, searched for five or so minutes, gave up, it was too boring. We wanted something else, we wanted something amazing. Uh, we found a zookeeper and he was telling us that he has all this amazing information but it's all on his computer. Uh, and from that day that really uh, stuck with us and we went back to the apartment and spent the, last, the next two days uh, logged up in there. Um, creating wireframes so that we could go back to Wellington Zoo and go to them with this idea. Uh, so a week later we scheduled that meeting and we presented to the, this idea to them that didn't exist yet, that we only had a few pieces of paper to show. Uh, and they were so excited for the prospect of this technology that they ended up signing a four-year contract uh, a few weeks later. So with that, and with that validation, and to see their excitement and their, uh, their passion to actually help us create this, uh, we decided to go for investment. And it came to us from a very uh, out of left, it came to us very out of left field. Uh, we weren't out looking for it, but through the connections that we'd already had and through people uh, hearing what we were doing and what we were starting, uh, people actually came to us. So we were really fortunate to be funded by Gareth Morgan uh, about two months after the original idea. Uh, and still at this point, not really a product. Uh, we knew that we wanted to be in the zoo and museum space, but we didn't know much about it. But the one thing we did know was that they had a bunch of information. They spent thousands of dollars curating this information. They have photos, they have videos. Uh, and what's the best way that we can get this to the world. So after doing some research in that space actually, what we also did realise was uh, there was two there was two solutions in the museum market. One being the audio guide, which is the headsets that you put on, uh, and I'm sure that most people have used them, but you would also know that probably five other people have used them that day and also uh, the big hitters. So the big 5% out there that can afford uh, large bespoke solutions. So we knew that much and understanding that uh, and knowing that they had a lot of content to share, we said, okay, let's uh, build a content management system that allows these organizations to curate their content by themselves 
Uh, they do the content creation best. We'll let them manage it. We'll uh, let them edit it in their own time and for it to be seamlessly uh, ported to users' phones. Okay. And then, so the, con uh, the mobile application in itself, uh, we want it to be seamless, uh, straight, uh, in live, real time, going to the users' phones, your visitors that are coming through those doors. Uh, and we wanted the information to be accessible from, uh, by the user instantaneously. It was the age of the QR code, and if you're looking at our name, it's not SDRY, it's SDQRY, because we wanted to use QR codes to instantly get you that information. We were starting, and for the most part, QR codes, it was that big bang right there. It was new technology. Our museums were totally excited about it, and we were excited to be building a product like this. It, it became the complete venue guide for the user coming in getting curated content, scanning the QR codes, getting that information. We started in Wellington, that was our home base, and I'm really, really happy that we did. Uh, it allowed us to validate our product, it allowed us to test our product, uh, but we didn't stay in Wellington for long. And after four months of being in Wellington and building the first base of our product um, with the help of Gareth uh, funding us and supporting us, uh, we went straight to the United States. Uh, and with my co-founder, Chris, being from Seattle originally and working with Microsoft for three months, uh, back when he was 16, uh, it, was the best, it was the best hub for us to start in the um, Northern American market. And being in the United States, it was a very big change from uh, what we'd been doing in Wellington. Uh, we had to be a lot more aggressive and we didn't take any no's. We went for the biggest museums and because this is such new technology and because in the museum market, uh, I mean, it's the home of old stuff. So historic, ancient things are stored there. So the best thing that, uh, you know, they were saying, okay, well, uh, yeah, we have to put onto hardware and then how long does it have to take to, to change the content on the hardware? Like, should I send it to you and like three weeks later? Would that work? We're going, no, actually, you can curate it that day and it'll, it, it'll be live in, in less than a minute. And so that was something that we had to do a lot of education around. And, but once we landed that one big customer, and that first customer for us in the United States, and our actual first paid customer was the San Francisco Asian Art Museum. And they supported us throughout. They're still with us now, which is amazing. Um, and they've sold us on to every every person that they know, and they couldn't have been a first launch customer, first paid real customer uh, for us in the States. We really couldn't have picked a better market, uh, the museum market being so legacy, uh, but there are actually <laughs> more attendants, and this is a really, and we say this in all our speeches because it's, it's still something that we are struggling to believe, uh, but there are actually more attendance to museums uh, in the US alone than all sports games and uh, theme parks combined. So that's huge. I think uh, NFL, NBA, Disneyland, there are more attendance to museums and that's huge for us. And there's also more museums in the United States than all Starbucks um, and McDonald's combined. And that's just museums. And our target market was so much bigger than that. Art galleries, zoos, everything. We wanted every cultural destination in the world and um, we're pretty steady to hit that. Story today, uh, we've been going for 24 months. We have over 350 uh, organizations, including museums, art galleries, zoos, uh, and we have two, over 250,000 users per month, uh, unique users every month, and that's been pretty steady uh, for, this, for this year. We're working with some amazing museums, Asian Art Museum, as you can see there, uh, Te Papa, so Te Papa was, uh, we spoke with them the first couple of weeks that we began, and uh, they said no, that with, um, with Michelle and um, what she just said earlier about going back in the future and landing that deal, we were so persistent, and our goal was to get every single museum around them, and so they'd have to come on board. So they'd have to say, okay, we're the only ones now. I'm kind of ready. <laughs> Uh, we have the Auckland, uh, the Auckland uh, War Memorial Museum. We're really lucky to have the Walt Disney Family Museum in San Francisco. Uh, and the new ones that have come on this year, and the, the second part of this year, 
have been the Smithsonian and the Getty, which are the largest institutions in the world. So story in the beginning, we were all about QR codes. We uh, were just a startup, and we still really are, but we've able to, and because we haven't focused really, uh, and a lot of our investors have told us off for that for not focusing, it's actually been one of the best things for us. Uh, over the last two years, we've trialled so much technology, and we've really stuck with the ones that uh, we feel are going to make us into a billion dollar company. Uh, that's one being is the indoor positioning in turn by turn directions. Uh, as you know, we've got GPs for outdoors. We want to create that experience that you get needing to go to a destination, uh, going to dinner, finding your house uh, indoors, where you go to the Louvre, you only want to see the Mona Lisa, and we can give you step-by-step -step directions to that specific item that you want to see. This will revolutionise our product, and we've already had so much feedback and so much interest from our museums uh, in the States, uh, including the Smithsonian and the Getty, which have been really exciting for us. Uh, but we feel that this application can grow into every single vertical, and now it is that time for us to focus a little bit and really just hit it out of the park. With turn-by-turn -turn directions and mapping, we want to get rid of the QR code and make storytelling as seamless as possible. One of them being uh, iBeacons. And iBeacons are little bits of hardware that you stick along a wall and we can actually tell where a user is, we know how long they've been there, and that information to us is so valuable because now we say, okay, the user is standing in front of the Mona Lisa, here's the story for it, without the user having to scan anything, to search anything up. The experience is instant for them. Again, this application, we feel we have tons of verticals. We have to establish what those are now and hit it out of the park. The storytelling platform, and like I said many times, we have many verticals, uh, because every single organisation in this world has a story to tell, and if they don't, then they're not a, the right person for our, on, to be on our platform. But as you all know, everyone has a story, and the biggest thing that has uh, resulted with building a big storytelling platform with a really easy to use content management system uh, has been that we've been able to replicate it and uh, put it into other markets such as a comm system for a Kiwi Bank which we were fortunate enough to work on uh, this year. Uh, and with Kiwi Bank they've got an amazing story and they want to be able to tell their story to their employees on a day-to-day -day basis without posting up posters to a wall. Uh, they really want to be 2.0 and this is what Story has allowed them to do. Uh, they've put on videos and images and texts every single day to keep their employees up to date and current with what's happening in their organisation. Thank you so much. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions in the panel. Uh, and one thing that I will leave off with is fake it till you make it. And that is the biggest, <laughs> yeah, and we've done a lot of faking it to actually make it there. Uh, but that has been the biggest uh, mantra in our team. And it's allowed us to, although we might not have the most complete product in the beginning, so in our two years, we sold our organisations the dream. This is really new technology, but this is going to be the next thing that your users want. And we promise that building your own app spending thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars is not going to be the answer. The answer is story. And we haven't had a single no, except from Te Papa. We haven't had a single no in the last two years. We've had some maybes, but the next, after you know, a month or two, they call us. And that's when that validates everything for us. Um, and just one thing that I didn't mention is uh, team. So everyone said today how, how amazing and how important your team is, and that's absolutely true. And without our team, uh, we couldn't have got here and where we are today with 350 customers and such a great reputation in the museum market. Uh, we employ entrepreneurs. We employ uh, people that have passion and have drive and that are in the office with us until 2 a.m. So uh, my advice to uh, other small businesses and people that are starting out 
would be to employ people that have as much passion as you. And sometimes it takes a little bit of uh, getting under the surface to realize that, uh, getting over those barriers that people come up coming to interviews. Uh, and just understanding that, hey, this, there is a real entrepreneur in this person and um, everyone that we've employed to date um, and the people, the ones that have left have all started their own businesses. So I think getting into that mindset when hiring is really important. Cool, thank you.